All right, welcome everyone. My name is Tanisha Burt. And tonight we're going to have, this is an exclusive training for gold builders and above. Um, I've been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one trainings or one-on-one -on -one coachings with your team members. And I've been getting some feedback about the people that they are reaching out to do their three-way calls. And some of you are very strong at doing a three-way call and some of you are not. And so as, um, you know, as a leader, it's my responsibility to make sure that all of our gold builders and above and, and our leaders are proficient in conducting a three-way call. The last thing that you want to happen is your team member not using you for three-way calls because they feel like you're messing it up. Right, and then that means they're not gonna follow you. So I want you guys to be the absolute best at doing three-way calls. So I've come up with a simple, well, I'm not gonna say it's a simple system, but I'm gonna share with you how I conduct a three-way call. Now, I am not your boss, you can do whatever you want, but this is just what I do on a three-way call. And I've wrote it out in a, system, in, a, in a flow for you so that you can duplicate it. Okay, so we're going to get started. And I also want you to write down your questions at the very end. I want some feedback from both of, from all of you um, so that I can help you with these three-way calls. So again, this training is on how to be the expert on the three-way call. The first thing after your business partner has edified you and introduced you to their prospect, the first thing you want to do is get to know your prospect. Thank you, Natalie, for taking the time to speak with me today about this amazing opportunity. But before we get into the business, tell me, who is Natalie and what's piqued your interest about this opportunity? So I want to get that person to start sharing with me a little bit about them. And I want to use the form technique. Form is a technique that you use to get to know people. You want to know about their family. You want to know about their occupation. You want to know about their recreation and what motivates them. Okay, so you want to ask them those questions and take notes. You want to be a great listener and take notes so that you'll be able to tie this business opportunity to your um, prospect. I'm recording. <laughs> Thank you, Tyra. All right. Now, once your prospect has shared with you their background information and what's piqued them, you want to ask, your, ask the right questions so you can sell your prospect on their dream and not a travel business. Let me repeat that. You want to sell your prospect on their dream and not sell them a travel business. So how do you do that? I always ask this question. If you had unlimited income and unlimited time, what would your life look like? Where would you live? What kind of car would you drive? How would you spend your time? You wanna get your prospect dreaming about what their life would be with unlimited income and unlimited time, right? They may say, oh, I would love to live uh, on a beach in a warm climate. And I'm like, okay, how many bedrooms would you like? They're like, oh, I want, I want five bedrooms because I want my family to be able to come and, and, and visit whenever they want. Okay, you could drive any car off the lot. What car are you picking? Oh, I, uh, I would like a Range Rover. Okay, all right. How would you spend your time? Because now you don't have to work for anybody. So how would you spend your time? Oh my gosh, I would be traveling and going to these places. Okay, well, what are some places on your bucket list? You want to get your prospect to imagine what their dream life would look like with unlimited income and unlimited time. And now once they paint that picture for you, now you ask them the million dollar question. How much income do you need monthly to live your dream life? And whatever they say, write it down. Now, some people, you may have to help them out, right? Um, some people, they just never even thought about it, and it's hard for them to come up. So you may have to work with them. You know, ask them, well, how much money do you need to pay off all your monthly living expenses now, right? Let's take what you're bringing home now and double it or triple it. So you may have to help them come up with that number, but you want to come up with a monthly income number that will help them live their dream life. Now you want to test their seriousness about winning. So here's where I ask, 
if you had one shot in life to have everything you've ever wanted in life, would you take the shot or would you hesitate and make excuses, right? Because now if this person is telling me that they would take the shot, then when I share this business opportunity with them and showing them how they can actually get that dream life, then there should be no hesitation with them getting started in the business, right? So it really, it's a psychological thing that they already told me that they would take the shot. So now it makes it a little bit more difficult for them to back out of this opportunity once um, you know, we get their questions answered. So next you want to share your two minute story. If you do not have a two minute story, create one, okay? In two minutes, you need to tell your background and why you got started in the business and where you're going with it, right? So your story should be tailored and relatable to your prospect. What do I mean by relatable? Let's say, for example, your prospect does not have kids, which at this point you should know, right? Because if you're using the form technique, family, you should know about their family situation. So if your prospect doesn't have kids, instead of you saying when you're telling your story that you started the business to be a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, instead say that you started the business for time freedom, right? So you want to relate to your prospect. Your story should include the answers to the most common questions your prospect will most likely have, right? We all know from doing this business, a lot of people get confused with how much it costs to get started and what are the different levels, right? They think there's levels in this company, but you can tailor your story to answer the questions before they even ask it. So I usually say, when I saw this business opportunity, it was a no brainer for me. It was a $200 investment. It was 60 bucks a month. It came with a 30 day money back guarantee and a product was travel. I always include that in my story. And usually at the end of the, when I get to the point where I ask them if they have any questions, they always say, well, you pretty much answered all my questions, right? Because I included that as part of my story. Use the income disclosure statement to set the expectations to achieve their financial goals. The income disclosure statement is in your Planet Marketing back office and it shows how much our representatives made for the year. So if you take all those numbers and divide each of them by 12, you'll be able to determine how much they made per month. And that is what I use to show the prospect what it's gonna take for them to make the type of money they need monthly to live their ideal life. Ideal life. So use the income disclosure statement broken down by monthly income to show the prospect exactly what it would take to make the income they said they needed to live the ideal life that they described to you. So if the person says um, they need, if they had $5,000 a month, they could be living their ideal life. I pull this up and I give them two scenarios. I break down the two star director and I say, listen, we have a level in our company called two star director. The, a two-star director is someone who has a team of 300 travel business owners. The average two-star director worked their travel business 20 hours a week, and on average, they made $4,209 a month. Now, the next level from there is a three-star director. A three-star director is someone who has a team of 500 travel business owners, and the average three-star director worked their travel business 30 hours a week, and on average, they made $7,793 a month. Guys, this is a very, very powerful tool because you're not just sharing the compensation plan, you're actually showing your prospect the plan, the path to achieving their goals. And now they know what their goal is because you help them dream and think about what that looks like for them. And here you're showing them exactly what it will take to get it. Next, you're gonna ask your prospect if they have any questions. What questions do you have that I can answer for you so that you can decide if you wanna move forward and partner with Michael, right? So now they're gonna take over. Overcome your prospect's object objections. So here I listed some of the most common objections that you'll hear. Someone may bring up, well, I don't have a lot of time. 
Well, explain to them leverage, right? They don't, if they have someone who's interested in the business, they get to leverage other leaders. They get to leverage um, the local meetings, right? They don't have to be at the meeting. They can send their prospect to the meeting in New York and leverage Stacy, who lives in New York and say, hey, I have a, a, a guest coming to the New York meeting. Can you take care of them, right? Leverage. Leverage the time and talent of other people. You don't have to do everything, right? They're going to plug their prospect into the system that we have, and they're going to leverage the time and talent of other people. What if I can't do it? Well, explain to them the 30-day money-back guarantee. You have the first 30 days to test this business out from the inside. And if you decide within your first 30 days that this is not a good fit for you or you don't feel you're getting the support that you need, guess what? You can get 100% of your money back, no questions asked. And Teletravel has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, and that's because there's a lot of people that can do it, and they're making money. Another objection, how does Teletravel's prices compare to other online sites? Go right back to the guarantee, the best travel price guarantee. If you book a vacation package for your client and your client happens to find that exact package someplace else for less within a certain time frame, and Teletravel is going to match it, beat it, or give them 110% of the difference and a credit towards their next vacation. What if I don't make any money? Well, now go and explain the risk pre profit guarantee. Within your first 365 days in business, if you haven't earned or saved the amount of money that you've invested, and Teletravel is going to cut you a check for the difference. So they're guaranteeing that you will not lose any money in your first year in business. Another question, how will I get trained? Your success coach will do a one-on-one -on -one training with you and show you all the tools and resources available to your uh, I got to redo that. <laughs> we'll show you all the tools and resources available to help you be successful. You're in business for yourself, but never by yourself. You have layers of leadership. So again, you want to overcome their objections. Next, you want to anticipate the sale. So now this is where you're going to close them, right? So sometimes I say, are you near a computer so I can walk you through the 10-minute sign-up process and get you started on the training? They'll either say, yeah, hold on, let me get to my computer. Or they may say, well, I'm not ready to get started right now. So if they tell me they're not ready, I get them to commit to a date of when they're going to be ready or when I'm going to follow up with them. And that is it. That is how you become the expert on the three-way call. That is the flow that I use. Those are the questions that I ask. So now I'm going to go to the chat and see what questions do you have. And the first question, Tamika said, how do you show them on the phone? So Tamika, are you referring to the, um, if you can unmute yourself, Tamika? Yes, no, I was hearing you talk about the um, income disclosure. So I personally, you know, use it myself and, and talk to them about it and tell them, you know, where they would have to be and how many people would have to be on their team. But you keep saying you show them. So I just wanted to know. Oh, well, I meant figuratively showing them. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> now, of course, if I'm face to face, you know, I pull it out so they could actually see it. But yeah, what I mean, show them, I mean, you know, I, I actually tell them to write it down. I say, listen, I'm going to give you a couple of figures. I want you to write this down so that you can see exactly what it's going to take to achieve your goals with this business opportunity. And then I just oh. kind of read it off to them. Okay. Um, Tyra said, will you go back to the first slide? Sure, Tyra. Hold on. The get to know your prospect. Thank you, Natalie, for taking the time to speak with me today about this amazing opportunity. But before we get into the business, tell me, who is Natalie and what's piqued your interest about this opportunity? All right, awesome. Any other questions? I want you guys to unmute yourself and ask your questions and let me know, you know, what challenges you face. Tell me, do you think this is a good flow that you could easily adapt to what you're doing?
Hey, Tanisha. It's Kevin Nikia. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Um, I changed my name, by the way. I wanted to uh, make sure my professionalism showed show through the Zoom and my Facebook. So just in case you see, I am the old mahogany, but the new Kevin Nikia. <laughs> okay, Kevin Nikia. And you know what? <laughs> I, I want to commend you on that because we all have to elevate to the next level and be Absolutely. professional. So I commend you for doing that. Absolutely. Thanks. So, thank you so much. So I think that everything was, this is a wonderful training. I know this is something that I needed personally. Um, I know a lot of times during the week, um, I am normally too late to try to catch someone who says, can someone take a call? But I haven't felt comfortable enough to actually do it. So I'm glad that this has been recorded so I can now help my team and then feel stronger about it. Um, and then reach out to be able to assist others as well. So this was really helpful. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And what I, another thing that I would suggest is get your director to do some, maybe some more three-way calls for you. Or I've had, um, ask your director if you could listen in on some three-way calls that they're doing. I've had yep. several people you know, say, hey, your next three-way call, can, can I listen in? You know, I want to you know, just to sharpen their own skills, because that's how you learn. That is how you learn. I can tell you when I got started in this business, um, Camet and Cynia filled my calendar with three-way calls. I mean, it was back to back to back to back to back. I mean, I've, I've done, I, I feel like I've done hundreds of three-way calls for them. But as a result, they can slay a three-way call. They can close a prospect in a minute. They are very, very good at what they do. And they sound just like me because that's how they learn. So some people, unfortunately, um, and it's, it's being uncoachable, I'm just gonna be transparent, they don't let their leader do three-way calls for them. They're doing their own three-way calls. So not only are they not getting the training that they need to elevate their level of doing a three-way call, but now they're doing piss poor, and I'm gonna say that, piss poor three-way calls for their team. And it's very selfish. It's very selfish because now your team is hurting because you're being uncoachable. Your leaders, that is how you learn is by working with your leaders. We're telling people you're in business for yourself and not by yourself, but then you get in the business and you're trying to do your own calls and now you're not getting the training that you need to do the call correctly. And, you know, it's been kind of, um, you know, embarrassing for me. I'm very disappointed um, with some of the feedback that I'm hearing that some of your people will not use you guys for their three-way calls because they said, the, you know, you did a call for them and it was horrible. And, that, and I feel bad. And so that's why I'm doing this training. But I need all of you to um, do the right thing and don't close your, your own people until you get to the point where you are slaying that three-way call. Don't be messing up your team's prospects because you're not doing a call correctly for them or you're too aggressive some of the feedback i've gotten is oh that, um, my leader was too aggressive on the phone or they weren't listening to my, my prospect only wanted to do travel and all they talked about was the marketing and it turned my prospect off or um my the the leader on the line um didn't really answer my prospect's questions right didn't overcome the objections properly or the the leader didn't sound like they knew what they were talking about. I mean, it was, it was just, it's been a whole array of things that I've heard as far as feedback. Uh, I'm hoping that this training at least gives you guys a, a format to follow so that you can just stick to the format and then help close those calls. All right. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Alicia, what's up? So what if you have a prospect that wants to do, how would you do the, conduct the three-way call through a Zoom? Like, I actually has a prospect that um, they're interested in it, but um, for me to do a three-way, well, for like, say, for instance, if I want to call you or something like that, how would I be able to call you, if, you know, through Zoom? Because he wants to be able to see. Okay, so you just... You schedule the Zoom. Do you have your own Zoom number? Yes, I do. Okay. So then you give everybody a time to be on the Zoom, and then, you know, there's three people on the Zoom. 
Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, Great. you just do the introduction. So, same, follow yeah. the same thing. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Make mm -hmm. sure that you are looking professional. Yes. Right? Because <laughs> now they're going to see you. So make sure you are, if you're doing a Zoom or a Skype or any type of video conference with your prospect, make sure you are in a well-lit place. Make sure there's no background nor noise. Make sure the lighting is good. Hair, makeup, look professional like you're ready to do business. Right? And make sure anybody that's in your house at the time that they know you're going to be doing uh, a Zoom and you can't have any noise or interruptions. Okay, great. Okay. So Mickey says she had a question for me. Okay. Uh, let me see. Come on, unmute. Um, funny part is that was the my my question for you, Alicia, because that is a good question. But that was actually my first time ever hearing that. So I want you to um, I want to know how do you get to how does the three how does your prospect know that you're getting the expert on the phone? Like how are they telling you up front? that they want to do a face-to-face -face because we're 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 scheduling the call with our leader we're sharing the, the video or whatever we're doing and then we're we're getting our leader on the phone on their calendar but we're asking those two questions and we're going directly into um you know putting our senior expert on the phone so share with me what you're doing for them to even tell you that they want to do a video chat so um i followed the steps as to you know the peak issue steps went uh, uh with tanisha but when i got to the part where uh sending the last video because i sent the videos through facebook what i do is i copy and put it in my uh you know send it to text message to my phone with their name and stuff and so i follow the strip but at the end he wants to schedule a time that will be convenient that he can do me face to face because i actually uh up in there i will like call and i'll be like hey how are you doing i just want to introduce myself to tell you who i am you know so that some people may think it's a scam or something like that and i let them know that i'm not a scam and i'm in the process of i'm heading back out to work because usually i'll be back getting ready to go back to work i'm gonna catch you on a lunch break or something like that and so when i talked to him and i told him that i was headed back in but i just want to touch bases with him and just tell him you know who i am and get a little you know to know him and so we talked for a minute and he said he wanted to do schedule a time that we can talk face to face and so that's where we're at so that's why i asked you know how would i do that face to face interview so what i'm okay so what i'm gathering is you never show you never share the information with him at from this point correct yes he's yes he's watched all three of the videos no 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 i'm saying i'm not talking about a specific oh. person i'm saying at the beginning of your call because based on what i just heard you say you're saying i'm just sending the peak interest post and then mm -hmm. you're, you're saying that hey i'm picking up the phone calling them because i want to just introduce myself and then in that in the middle of that call you're saying he's like okay well i want to talk to you face to face so based on how you just worded it he's ne that person at that time has not gotten the video he has okay well i must miss word because he he's watched the first two videos which are the first the peak and the ita and the rep that's why i know he's interested in learning more because i asked him okay now that you've watched those videos are you still interested in learning more and he tells me yes so when he tell me yes, that's my cue to call him just to, you know, pretty much say, introduce myself. Okay, and, stop. stop right there. Stop right yeah, there. that's where I was going, Tanisha. So I had to get it out of her. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Listen, if you guys go off script, you're going to back yourself in the corner. Okay. The whole reason that we have the script is because, and if you notice, how many times have I tweaked the script since I put it out? Right. This is probably the third edit that I've done to this script. And the reason why I edit it is because of the feedback that I'm getting from the prospects. And so I'm tweaking the script so that you guys don't get yourself caught in a situation that you don't know how to handle. And so now you have the script, Alicia, and you're going off script because my script does not say anything about call the prospect to say anything, does it? No. Okay. If you would have stuck to the script and said, Hey, you know, glad you're interested. When are you available for a call? None of that would have happened. So you put yourself in that situation because you went off script. I can't help you if you go off script. 
and it's yes. not duplicatable. You want your team to be able to duplicate what you're doing, but if you're not sticking to the script, how are they going to do it? Right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now that we fixed that, <laughs> anybody else? And this See, I don't have I don't have a question, T, but I just wanted to elaborate. Um, you and you may have you may have even said it, but I know when you were going over the comp, I'm sorry, the um, income disclosure. I uh, mm -hmm. just want to kind of piggyback on that. So when they tell me, um, just want to use this for whoever may be taking notes. Um, when they when we talk about how much money they want to make, because I know I'm sure I know you said that because I always hear you say that on call. Mm -hmm. So when the individual um, tells me how much they want to make. Mm -hmm. Whether it's 500, 200, 3,000, 3, or whatever. Um, we want to make sure we're asking them is this residually, is this monthly, so forth. And that's how, because um, I know this question has been asked to me. So that's really why I'm bringing it back up to, because some of my leaders on the phone as well. So, you know, we need to make sure, because the, let me back it back. The question has been asked to me well, people want to get into this business and they want to travel, and all we're talking about is the marketing side. So going back to where individuals think that they can sell them a travel business and then, you know, you're thinking you can get them into the business and then try to flip them to be a marketer. And it does not happen that way. It will not happen that way. Right. right. So just I want to um, make sure that everybody is finding out what their goal is. Now, we as builders, we automatically assume we want them to, you know, build. We want to make sure that they know exactly what it is that they want. Right. We're going to give them that. So when that individual says, hey, I'm looking to make an extra $1,000 um, a week, a month, or so forth, whatever the case is. Now, like Tanisha said, she's going to go over that income disclosure statement and tell them exactly what it is that they need to do. But one of the things that I do first is find out why do they need to make that extra $1,000 a month? Why do they need to make that extra $5,000 a month, right? And then from there, they're going to, you know, they're going to tell me exactly why. Mm -hmm. Now, the, bit, the next step is, you go into the income disclosure statement telling them, you know, exactly how many they have to have. But we want to ask that question. Do you want to make that $1,000 a month residually or whenever? And the reason why we're using that terminology residually so they can understand that they're not getting that from the travel business. Right, right. And you're right. able to flip your mind. Right. And that is what I am finding that is not taking place. I agree. That is what is not taking place. And that is the biggest part of the three-way call that is messing up the entire call. So, so yep. many people are coming to me saying, you know, hey, I put JoJo in the business and day, day two, uh, they're gone. By mm -hmm. day 18, they've canceled because mm -hmm. they see travel on your page. You have sold them a travel business. And now you want them to jump on the webinar, jump on the team call, jump on the three calls on Sunday. You want them to launch their business and all that other stuff. So that is the biggest uh, problem. We need to make sure that, and, and, and I'm always preaching, talking about that why. Now, when they tell me they need to make that $1,000, now we found out if they want to do it residually or if they want to just do it whenever, that's based on the travel side. Now I ask them, I personally ask them how many hours a week are you committed to work in this business to, to create that type of income because mm -hmm. that is very much important mm -hmm. y'all they come in and say hey i want to make a thousand i want to make five thousand i want to make you know two thousand a month but the big question is well how many hours a week are you committed to work in this to work in your business to create that type of income mm -hmm. and then they will tell me and then my next question is for how many months how many months are you committed to work in let's say 10 hours a week to develop that type of income. And then the reason why I do that is because now we're already both of us on the same page and helping them to understand, you know, Hey, you, you, you told me you're going to commit six months. You told me that you're going to commit 12 months. I do three way calls. Sometimes people say, you know, well, I'm, I'm willing to commit however long it takes because you know, Hey, I'm really trying to buy a house within the next, you know, 12 months. I'm willing to give it all that I have. But we want to ask that question because now we have, when we go back to them, you know, like we know a lot of people come into the business and, you know, they're stagnant. You tell them to write a list. You tell them to launch your business. You tell them to do all these things and they're really not moving. But well, that is leverage that I have to go back on because, hey, Tanisha, you told me that you were willing to commit. You know, you told me you were willing to commit 10 hours a week for at least eight months to develop this type of income. Now we're in the first 30 days and you want to quit. You want to cancel. You're not doing anything. Right. 
So right. I think that those are some very important questions and it helps them know that this is a business. Every conversation that I have within my three-way, I am making sure that prospect understands that this is a business that is not being done on three-way calls because I have actually sat in on some three-way calls. And we're coming off again, selling them the travel business. And that is why we are not able to develop building a team. Because at the end of the day, if you do not ask those specific questions, making sure that they understand that this is a business opportunity, you treat this business like a business, it will pay you like a business. If you treat it like a hobby, it's gonna pay you like that. We're not even, you know, we're not making them aware of that. And they're thinking this is something easy because travel is supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be fun, right? They, they booked their own travel before and they didn't have to sit through webinars. They didn't have to sit through team calls and trainings and all of that stuff just to go to Jamaica. So we have to do a better job of realistically, um, this is a great training, by the way, Tanisha. Um, thank you for putting that together. But we have to do a better job of realistically understanding the proper way of doing that three-way call. Back to you, Tanisha. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why, guys, you'll see in the beginning here, I say, you know, before we get into the business, tell me who is Natalie and what's piqued your interest about this opportunity? So it's usually at this point that they're gonna say, oh, well, I was interested in the opportunity because I wanna be able to travel more. So I'm already making a mental note that, you know, it's all about the travel thing for them. But then once you move on and you start asking them, you know, to create that dream, what does their dream life look like? And how much do they need to live that dream life? And then you go into the income disclosure statement. Now they're going to see, and, and Tamika is right, this is exactly where I point out to them. Once I give them these figures of what it's going to take to make $5,000 a month or whatever they say, I let them know right up front, right then and there, this money does not come from booking travel. You can still book travel. Remember, you have two businesses. You have one business as a travel agent. You have one business as a marketing rep. But the $5,000 that you told me you wanted to make, that is going to come from building a team. And any money you make booking travel, that's going to be extra. So I let them see that this is where we're going to put our focus to make that $5,000 a month. But you can still book travel, but that's going to be extra. That is not the money to, lit, to create that ideal life that you just painted for me. And then again, once this person comes on board, you're going to go into the game plan interview. And that's where you're going to reiterate a lot of the things that Tamika just said. So yeah, some of that game plan interview, Tamika, like you were just bringing up, some of that I end up doing on the three-way call as well. So they're just getting it, hearing it again once we do the three the um, game plan interview. Because then it's okay. Tell me your why, and and you'll see that once they hear the full spectrum of the business, their why has changed from when they were doing a three-way call to now they're in the business because now their why has gotten bigger. Now they have bigger goals because they see the path to actually achieve it. Um, looking in the chat and Debbie said, most of the questions we are asking when we do the getting started, exactly. Uh, Debbie's asking, how long is it taking you to do a three-way call? Three-way call should be 30 minutes or less. <laughs> 30 minutes or less every now and then I may get a prospect who has a lot of questions and it could go an hour um, but ideally Debbie 30 minutes or less and this is good these are good questions anybody else have any feedback about the three-way calls this is Jessica how you doing hey, Jessica. I have a question uh-huh um, how you doing? Um, I have a question. So how do you handle, um, you know, sometimes you have a business partner who is over talking, they're talking a little too much. Um, they're asking a little bit more than, um, you know, what you like best. So maybe they've shared with the person that, you know, because they already know when they get me on the phone, Hey, the person has a problem with the money right now. Mm -hmm. And so then they go on to tell them that, they can just, oh, you got $20, you can just do the uh, rep side. Um, how do you handle just someone signing up as a rep? And honestly, for me, because I've done this, I've signed up people as a rep and, you know, we're we like, they all for it. Oh, we're going to um, do this list. I know plenty of people that would join and they just so gung-ho. And I'm pretty much almost everyone I've ever signed up is just a rep. 
because they don't have the product like how do you convince someone if they say well oh wow you have a you have a website let me see your website um how do you convince someone to buy a product that you don't even have yourself like so how do you handle that objection on the three-way call okay so the first thing i heard you say is that the business partner is talking too much right mm -hmm. so you definitely want to do a one-on-one -on -one coaching with the business partner and let them know that once you once they introduce you they should be muting their line and not interrupting oh not on the phone with me but, oh. they, you know before they get me on the line they have already shared with me you know i guess you know they're supposed to just ask like one question or they're supposed questions. to ask two questions two questions what right? did you and like so, best about what you saw and on a scale of one to ten what's your interest level those are the only right. two questions they should be asking so you need to coach that person and tell them to stick to the system and stop again we have a success system in place but if people keep going off script this is what happens right um i never ever sell just the rep side i'm not even gonna there's been maybe one or two instances where i had someone just do the rep side and it was only because that person was they were in a financial situation but they wanted to get started right away like they were hungry and it was a matter of they're getting the ita like on friday or something like that but they're ready to get started so that was like the only time but typically when you sell someone just the um the rep side they almost never sign up for the ita exactly okay that's all right i just i just wanted to see your take on that okay yeah i don't I don't do that. And and here's the thing, your prospect, they don't know what they don't know. And so you and I know as leaders that if you don't own the ITA and you are just a rep, you have zero credibility with prospects. Exactly. How are you trying to sell somebody something that you don't own? You can, and if right. that person, if your prospect is excited about the travel and they have all these travel questions, you can't even answer their questions because you don't know what they're talking about because you don't own the product. Mm -hmm. We don't sell the car without the wheels. We don't do right. that. We know okay. better. Thank and you. you don't make any money selling just a rep. Nobody And a rep cannot, someone who is just an ITA only, I mean, I don't know how many more times this conversation has to happen, but you guys are saying you want to get to directorship, but then you don't have anybody helping you get there. Right. And so now that person who is a rep only who doesn't own the product, they're going to do a horrible job at bringing people into the business because they don't own the product. So now they can't even help you. You know, they're a rep. They can't help you get to directorship. They selling something they don't understand. They don't own. And the same thing with selling just the ITA only. Right. So now you sell someone a travel business who can't sell the travel business to help you get to directorship. We sell the package. It is a two hundred dollar investment period 60 bucks a month when i'm on the phone with my prospect that's what i tell them this is a 200 dollars investment 60 bucks a month i don't go into well the travel side is this much and then for an extra 1995 i don't do that i don't do that they don't know what they don't know i'm telling them based on the information you shared with me based on what you telling me about how much income you want to make monthly and what you want your dream to look like it's going to cost you a 200 dollars investment and 60 bucks a month period. So now I'm tying exactly what they want, what they said they want into this is what it's going to take to accomplish that. And we're not okay. going to tell them to do one side or the other. We're saying you're doing both. We're not going to, I'm not going to let you leave any money on the table. Let's get it all. Does that make sense, Jessica? Is Jessica still there? Anybody else have a comment? These are great questions. Keep the questions coming because this is going to help some people. I'll ask a question just in case they won't, um, just because I want you to talk about it and this is being recorded. When the prospect says that they don't, they don't have the money, I want you to respond back how you would respond because something that I'm finding out, um, just like you're saying, Tanisha, when people get on your calendar and you're finding out that a lot of people, this is a big problem for us, so many people are, you know, overbooking on our calendars because we have 40 other people that they're saying, hey, I don't want them to do my three-way calls because when the prospect says they don't have the money, they say, okay, 
just call just call Tamika back whenever you have it. So please elaborate on that because that's killing a lot of people's calls right now. So when I get someone that says that they don't have the money, the first thing I'm asking them is when will you be ready? And to be honest with you, because we're in a moment in time and we're moving fast, I, I don't have time to mess around with the people who don't have the money. So my question is immediately, when will you be ready? And based on whatever time they say, I'm going to put it on my calendar. Okay, we're going to call you on such and such a date to follow up. And I'm moving on to the next person. Because if you're spending a lot of time trying to get that person to get money that they don't have, those are the very same people who go on credit hold every month. And I don't have time for that. I'm, I'm sick of the credit holds. I'm sick of reaching out to the people month after month after month. They don't have the money. And someone who is serious about winning right now and they're hungry, they will find the money. They will make it happen. Because trust me, when it's the last day of the month and the rent is due and they're $200 short, they find the $200. So I don't, I used to, you know, get creative and stuff, but I don't, now that I've been in the business longer and I've had to deal with all these credit holds and things, and when you get an organization of over a thousand people and you have on the 28th, you've got 40 people going on credit hold, you kind of move away from trying to help people who are not ready to start the business. So I just simply ask them, what date will you be ready? And then we're going to, that's when we're going to follow up and I'm getting them off my phone and I'm moving on to the next person. That's just me personally, Tamikia. Um, but if you want to share something different, the floor is yours. Well, I do do it different, but, um, just based, I, I totally do it different. But based okay, on go ahead. Share what, what you you're do. saying, based on what you're saying, no, I'm, I'm not here to go back and forth what you do. I'm just, you know, when people tell me, Hey, you know, I got on, let's say I got on Tamika's, you know, Tamika did my three-way call. And when the person said they didn't have the money, she just said, okay, well, call Jessica back whenever you do. No, that's not right. I mean, because first of all, we should always be booking a meeting from the meeting. So, right. you know, you did elaborate on that, even outside of what I do. You know, you're saying, hey, when do you have the money? So I want to make sure that that part is yes. covered because yeah. that is something that's not happening. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and when, when they told you, okay, well, I'll have it on the 19th. I personally go in on the 19th. Okay, well, you know, when, what, what, on the 19th, what time? Exactly. You know, when, when are you going to have 20 minutes in front of your computer so we can go ahead and get you enrolled? Exactly. I guess, you know, put your welcome card down on your orientation. Exactly. But I'm just saying all the way around, I'm finding out that that too is not happening. So for that other person that has worked really hard to get the prospect on the phone, because it's hard now, you yeah. know, I, I think they do want to get a little bit more. So at least if they have, you know, I was sharing this on a training the other day. I don't care if they tell you I'm not going to be ready until February the 15th. It needs to go on the calendar. Absolutely. Um, something, something else that I, all, I, I uh, also touch bases on is let's say in this case, like you said, this person is not ready at all because sometimes, now me personally, I say, look, if they're not a, me, for me, if they're mm -hmm. not a six or above, don't get on my, don't, don't do the three-way call with me. I'm just being transparent. So sometimes mm -hmm. we get people that say I'm a one or a two. Yeah, and, if you're you one know, or two, get us on don't call. exactly. That's a waste <laughs> of time. So we that's can. driving me crazy, <laughs> you know, but I want, but one thing that I do tell them, you know, as, as like you said to Jessica, you want to go back and have that one-on-one -on -one with that person. Um, even though they are a one or a two, they really shouldn't be on my calendar. No, don't get on my calendar, by the way. But what I told, you know, what I'm teaching is I still ask, is it okay for me to follow up with you in 90 days? Because you are not ready right now. This may not interest you right now at the moment, but this is honestly how I continue to follow up. Hey, Tanisha, I understand that this is not a good fit for you right now. At the time, you're not interested, you know, for whatever reason. But is it okay if I follow up with you in 90 days? Absolutely. And they say yes. And Absolutely. so, you know, June the 9th, whatever 90 days is from now, I'm putting that on my calendar again. Absolutely. So I do want to throw that out there because that is how I've gotten to one and two star because I have continued to follow the nose because Absolutely. they are really not right now. Absolutely, Tamika. And the other thing is you should be asking for a referral. Well, who do you know that would be interested in an opportunity like this? You'd be surprised how many people will give you referrals to people that they know. It may not be for them, but they probably know a whole bunch of people who would be interested in this. So definitely ask them for the referral. And again, if I'm doing a three-way call for Jessica and her prospect says to me, 
um, well, I don't have the money to get started, I'm going to ask them, well, when do you think you'll be ready? And they may say, well, I'll be ready to end of the month. Well, I got my calendar open and I'm like, okay, well, the last Friday of the month is the 28th. Is that a good time to follow up with you? And they're saying, yeah, the 28th is good. I'm saying, okay, what time will you be in front of your computer on the 28th so that Jessica can call you and get you started? So just like Tamika said, we're locking in a time. We're not just keeping it up in the air. It's bam, bam, book a meeting from a meeting. So if they're not ready today, then they're going to be on the calendar for a follow-up. And once they tell me, well, oh, I'll be home at 7 o'clock, then I'm going to say, Jessica, does the 28th at 7 o'clock work for you to follow up with Elizabeth? And Jessica's going to say, yep, that works for me. I'm going to say, great. All right, Elizabeth, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Again, Jessica's going to follow up with you on the 28th at 7 p.m. to get you started. You know, go ahead and think of a name for your new travel agency. That's one of the hardest things about getting started. And once we get you enrolled in the system, we're going to immediately set up your direct deposit. Um, and then we're going to get you started on your training because you know summertime is coming and we don't want you to miss out on all those bookings you could be doing. Like, I sell them the business and get them excited. And in between then, if there is a local meeting in their area, get them to the meeting. Also invite them to the webinar. So the expert should be inviting the prospect to another exposure, especially if there's going to be a long delay, right? It's another two weeks because they will lose interest. And by the time the 28th comes, something's happened and they're no longer interested. So you want to keep them engaged and excited, right? Maybe you even start to get them working on their list right? Invite them to the IMV or to the corporate call, you know, keep them engaged in the business or else by the 28th, they've fallen off and they're not interested anymore. So definitely as the expert on a three-way call, that person at the end of the call, it's either a yes, it's a no, or it's a date. A yes, a no, or a date. That is your responsibility to collect either a yes, a no, or a date of when they're gonna get started or when the follow-up will be. Did I cover that all, Tamikia? Yes, ma'am. Awesome, thank you for bringing I gotta, this is Kevin Ike again. I gotta say that was an absolutely phenomenal tip on, on when you book a meeting from a meeting and that person is not with and there's a the little lingo time. Mm -hmm. um, I have one currently and I'm in Dallas and I, I'm going to, our meeting here soon and I didn't even think about that. Absolutely, yeah, get them to the meeting, you know, because once they get to a meeting, you got them. They gonna be ready, they gonna get, they gonna make sure they are ready on the 28th. Get them to a meeting. I, I, I know, I was ready to sign up again when I first met Mr. Moore, so. Exactly, and, and, and remember that, remember how you felt when you were at the meeting, because sometimes, I mean, our videos are good, don't get me wrong, our videos are great, but there is nothing like a live experience, up and personal, listening to the backgrounds of all the gold builders and the directors and the stories and the testimonies, that energy that's in the room. Once you can get your prospect there, you good. They're, they're, they're solid. They, they're going to be locked in. They're going to join. That, they'll they'll be ready. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Any questions, comments, concerns? This is the time. I want you guys to be able to slay your three-way calls. I'm telling you, if, if you follow this, this process, um, and like I said, I've, I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of three-way calls, and my three-way call has evolved. I'm telling you, it has evolved because you just learn to do certain things and you make some adjustments along the way, and then it just becomes so easy, so easy, right? And it's, there's no convincing. There's no convincing. If, if once you help that person create their dream, if they don't see the vision, you do not want them in your business. Get them off the phone quick. Say, okay, well, you know what? This, this sounds like this opportunity is not a good fit for you. Who do you know that would be interested? Just ask them for the referral. Don't try to convince anybody to join the business because if you have to drag someone into the business, you have to drag them through the business. And we don't have time for that. Tuana, I haven't heard you say one thing. Tuana, I just unmuted you. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm gathering all this in because this is a much needed 
training that I needed. Awesome. So, um, not not to say that I just was a little nervous about doing it. That's all. Um, feeling that I wasn't equipped, but um, so thank you so much. I'm 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 just sharing. I'm just absorbing everything that was said. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. You know, your first three-way call, you're going to be nervous, but just remember, Twana, that your prospect has no idea how the call is supposed to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Um, yes. Just make sure you have strong posture and know that you know that you know that you know that you know. We got the baddest opportunity on the planet. And if they don't see it, oh, well, keep it moving. Right? We yes. don't want everybody in our organization. Mm -hmm. We don't, you know, so you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. And here's the thing, Re release yourself from the pressure of wanting to sign them up. Take the money off the table. This is not about getting $50 from somebody, right? This is about you sharing information, answering questions so your prospect has a, a full understanding of what this is, and then you're collecting their decision. Yes, no, or date. That's it. So I want you all to re release the pressure of this person signing up. Because remember, 2% of the people you speak to will be ready to get started right away. That's two out of every 100 people that you speak to will get ready to start right away on a three-way call. And you guys are expecting that to happen on every call. That's not going to happen. That's very rare that that happens. So take that pressure off yourself because it's not, it's likely, it's more likely not to happen than it is to happen. Remember two out of every 100 people you speak to will be ready to sign on a three-way call. Five out of every 100 people you speak to will never, ever join a business. You can slay that three-way call. You can have Mr. Bradley himself on the call. You could become a multimillionaire driving a Bentley, have a, a private chef. They will never, ever join your business. They're the negative Neds, the negative Nancys. It's a scam. It's a pyramid. Tamiki is living a full life. She ain't really driving that Bentley. It don't matter how successful you are. They will never join the business. So do not ever try to convince someone on the call to join if they're telling you they're not interested and they have all these negative things to say. Just remember, they're probably one of the 5%. So don't waste your time. Get them off your phone as quick as possible so you can help the person who really wants to join the business. 93 out of every person, 93 of the people that you speak to need either more information or more time. 93%. So 93 out of every 100 people that you speak to will either need more information or more time. And out of those 93 people, it will take them approximately six months to a year to join your business. 93% of the people won't join until six months to a year after they've been exposed right? They're, they're the ones who say, oh, well, when I get my income tax, or when I finish passing the real estate exam, or when the kids go back to school, or, um, you know, as soon as I finish my class and I graduate, then I'll be ready, right? Or they're the ones that they want to see what you're doing first. Let me see if you're making any money. Let me see if Jessica upgrades her car. Let me see if Jessica's traveling. I want to see if she's successful, then I may join, right? Or maybe you shared they've done a three-way call, but they need a meeting. They need that in close, you know, meet the people belly to belly. They need that exposure. Or maybe they've seen the video, but now they need a webinar. So you invite them on a webinar. They need, they've seen a 10 minute video, but they need to see a 30 minute presentation, right? They need either more information or more time, 93%. So stop trying to get the people to sign up right then and there because it's, again, that's only 2% of the people that are going to be ready to get started immediately. Some of them, they may need to wait until payday, right? So does that help some of you kind of take the pressure off of the three-way call, knowing what the statistics are with closing them on that call? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember, you're just sharing information, answering questions, and collecting their decision. That's it. 
And if you're exposing 50 people a day using that script, now you're building a momentum. You're creating a funnel of people to sign up, right? And, and if you're consistent, I did, I did the calculations the other day. If you're sending out that Just Ask People script every single day, do you realize over the course of a year, you would have exposed 18,250 people if you're consistent every single day? And so if you're consistent every day for a whole year, that means six months from now, you should have people ready to join every week right? Because there's six month anniversary, seven month, right? That six months to a year is starting to happen and those seeds are going to start to harvest, but you got to be consistent. You can't stop, right? So remember, 2% of the people will join, be ready to join immediately on a three-way call. 5% will never ever join a business, no matter what you say or how successful you become. And 93% need more info or more time. And those people will take six months to a year to join the business. If you can internalize that that should help take the pressure off of you doing a three-way call debbie what's your feedback on that debbie any feedback tyra any feedback on that to me uh tanisha can you hear me yes yeah, sorry, I couldn't unmute myself. Um, the feedback was great and it's helping me understand more. So I appreciate everything today. Awesome. Thank you, Debbie. Yes. Tyra, what no, do you have? No feedback for me. Um, I'm soaking it all up. I was pretty much doing a lot of the stuff, but it is some things on my three ways that I wasn't doing um, that I was pretty much doing when I'm onboarding. So I'm going to implement this, this in with my three ways um, as well. So awesome. I will tweak some things. Okay, good, good. <laughs> and, and that's what it's about, guys. We're just, we're making some tweaks and adjustments so that we can get better and better and better. I have not achieved in, you know, everything that I want to achieve. I'm still working on my skills and sharpening my skills every single day. And as I learn some things that are working, then I'm gonna pass it on to you guys. But you guys have to do the same and pass it on to your team, right? Getting your team ready. If someone, if you see someone in your downline that's dropping people in the system and you haven't done any of their three-way calls, you need to reach out and find out what's going on. Who's doing their calls? Are they doing their own calls? And if so, that's a problem because then there's a good chance that their person is not being onboarded correctly and they're probably going to quit the business. They have no clue as to what they're doing. So make sure that you are doing your person's three-way calls. And again, same thing with the onboarding. Make sure you're onboarding your new business partner or your, the people in your downline if your business partner or downline is not a gold builder. Someone who is not a gold builder should not be onboarding their new business partners. They should be passing them on to you guys to onboard. I'm gonna repeat that because all of you are gold builders and above, right? If someone joins your team, you are the one who should be onboarding that new business partner, not your new business partner who is a bronze builder. Because there's a lot of people that I see going on credit hold month after month after month. And it's the same people and it's coming from the same leg of business. And so I'm trying to figure out what's going on in that leg of business where it's consistently these people are going on credit hold and quitting the business. I see so many cancellations. That's the other thing that I'm seeing. So I know that there's a problem. And I think us tweaking this, the three-way call, if we could all get on board and get on the same page with doing a three-way call like this, I think that's going, I know it's going to help with attrition. Tamika, what, what are your thoughts on that? No, my, my, my thoughts are definitely, um, of course, in alignment with yours, but um, I'll tell you one thing. I tend to defer or disagree a bit about the gold building part. Um, and the reason why I say that is now a person that just joined the business today, no, they are not ready to orient that person. But what I am suggesting is that the goal, because we're, we're trying to teach duplication. Mm -hmm. So for one, the goal builder or the director in training, 
um, needs to do the orientation or the onboarding, however you want to say it, with mm -hmm. with them. So it needs to be three of y'all on there. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Really no, 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 no. Thank you. I was not implying. I'm sorry if I if I said that wrong. I'm not implying that you guys, the gold builders, should be doing the orientation with the new business partner by yourself. No. I'm saying you do the orientation with the business partner, the three of you, because that is how you teach the duplication. Yes, thank you, Tamikia. I, I wasn't saying that the, the new business partner shouldn't be on the line. If your bronze builder enrolls a new business partner, you, the gold builder, should be doing the orientation with the new business partner and the bronze builder on the phone together, the three of you right and this way your bronze builder is getting the training on how to properly onboard the new people and by the time your bronze builder hits gold they know exactly what to do and they can duplicate the process i've even taken it taken it a step further because now the bronze builders would you agree to mikia the bronze builders know about the agent training manual they know about the online academy right and so now when i'm onboarding a new person i'm pretty much just onboarding them on the planet marketing side and then i'm letting the new business partner or the bronze builder show them the travel side right so now i'm kind of slowly getting them involved in the process of the onboarding but i'm taking control of the most important part which is the marketing part i'm doing a game plan interview i'm going over the script I'm asking them to identify their top six people on that onboarding. I'm having them send the script out to those six people right then and there. So now they know exactly what it's gonna take to build on the marketing side. And then I let them know, okay, um, you know, your, whoever the bronze builder is, they're gonna show you and get you started on the travel side. They're gonna, you know, help you change your password and personalize your website and get you started with the um, agent training manual and the online academy. So they're gonna show you all that. So that's something that I do. Is that what, Tamikia? Did I cover it all? Absolutely. And because we have our leaders on the line, just something I want to piggyback on. Um, we, I want to. I would like to see more of. I have been seeing. We're just saying to the to the new business partners or even the old ones. You're just saying, okay, get me on that three way call. We got to do a better job of going over the three-way call and properly uh, teaching them the process, the edification. That mm -hmm. is the biggest thing. We got to make sure we're doing a better job on the edification and also making sure that they understand that they need to meet their lines. And I am seeing that that is not being done. I was doing a three-way call, honestly, for a gold builder last week, which was so shocking to me. And I went back to her sponsor her upline because i'm saying i cannot believe the gold builder um actually did this but i was you know the person was asking a whole lot of questions and anytime you ask me that point of how much it costs that lets me know that you didn't watch the video right so what i said to the prospect i said okay well you know what i'm not sure which video that you took a look at um, because normally the price point is on there and that's just my way of saying that because my job is not to give a full presentation back over right. the phone. That means we need to send you back for another exposure. Right. Well, the person, right, the, the, the gold builder came through the line and said, well, she watched this and this and it. No, we don't want you to come off the line and say anything. So she pretty much took over the call. She literally took over that call at that point. And then I hung up. She was like, so she texted me and said, Tamika, Tamika, I'm calling for you. I said, I got off the line because you came through the line. That means you got it. So I'm right. gone. Have a good day. <laughs> you know? But I want to make sure we are properly teaching that because honestly, I'm seeing that that is not taking place. You're telling them that they have to do the three-way call. Make sure you get on, you know, Tanika's calendar, Tanisha's calendar and do the three-way call, but you're just sending them. What I'm finding out, going back to your version of attrition, um, Tanisha, you're absolutely correct on that attrition because we got to do a better job of teaching and I'm seeing that all the way down and all, all of our downlines that is not taking place. We're sending them to do it. We're saying you go do it, but we should be saying, let's go do it. We need to be absolutely. doing this together like you're doing this with us right now. Absolutely. Thank you, Tamikia. And I agree anytime. And, and those of you that are on the line who have done three way calls with me, I'm not even going to say it. I'm, I'm going to get somebody else to say it. What do I do after the three way call? 
with those of you who have used me for the three-way call. Who can speak? You do one-on-ones. On one? Exactly. Immediately after I do a three-way call with someone, I text them and I say, call me back when you get a chance so we can debrief. And I get that person on the phone and I say, what did you learn? Right? And I get them to tell me what they learned about that three-way call. And it's at that point, if there's some coaching that I need to do, if they did a horrible job with the edification, I'm going to let them know. I need you to work on your edification. That, it, was, it wasn't strong. I need your edification to be stronger. Or if they interrupted the call, I'm, I remind them, I need you to mute your line once you introduce me and do not come back on until I invite you back into the conversation, which I may do. Right? So as, as leaders, when you're doing three-way calls for, for your downline, do a debrief after the call, just a quick, it could be like three minutes. What did you learn? What questions you have? And then give them some feedback on the call. How did they do with the edification? How was their timing? If the call was supposed to start at eight and they didn't get you on the phone until eight ten, that's a problem. Find out what's, what's going on. We, if, if your call starts at eight, you should have me on the line by 8.03, right? Because I only have 30 minutes to do your call. So give them that feedback so that they can make the adjustments. And I promise you, they appreciate the feedback. They appreciate the feedback. Thank you for bringing that up, Tamikia. Anything else? All right. Um, real quick, go ahead, Tyra. Let me make sure that I'm um, correct about this. So you was talking about the onboarding. So once the person becomes a bronze, you're saying to start putting them on no, the no, orientations no. with us. No, 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 no. I'm saying you are a gold builder. So if someone mm -hmm. joins your team and your downline, you as the gold builder should be doing the onboarding with the business partner and whoever and enrolled them. So you're okay. doing the onboarding with the new person and their sponsor because that's how their sponsor is going to learn how to do the onboarding by hearing you do it by hearing you onboard their new person, because they don't know what to do. Right. So by the time you've done nine onboardings with them, with their new team, and now they're a goal builder, now they should be able to do the same for their team. Okay, so we're waiting till they're a goal builder before we release them and allow them to do their own. If okay. you feel they're ready. If, if they're okay. still not ready, then you need to do some more one-on-one -on -one coaching with them. But by the time they hit goal builder, they should know how to onboard. And I'll tell you, it's been my experience, what time is it? It's been my, um, what I've seen is that a lot of people, they're comfortable with doing the IntelliTravel orientation, but they didn't know what to do really with the Planet Marketing presentation, um, onboarding. So even though they were, they were following the game plan interview, the four steps to a great start, it still wasn't enough to get that person going with building. But now that we have the script, the Just Ask Peak Interest script, that is what you should be onboarding your new business partner with. Teaching them the script, making sure they have it, role playing with them, you know, have them read it to you, and then help them identify who's the three sharpest people that you know. Write their names down. Okay, give me three more sharp people. Okay, great. Now I want you to take the script and I want you to send it to those six people. That's a great way to get them going on the marketing side, right? And then of course, you know, you're plugging them into the meetings and making sure they have that on the calendar. You're still following the four steps to a great start, but the script is where you're gonna get the duplication because once they see how simple that is, now you got them going. And then you can show them okay, here's the IntelliTravel Agent Training Manual and the Online Academy, Compliance, blah, 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 all that stuff. But helping them get started on the script is the main part of onboarding them for the planet marketing side if they're looking to, you know, build. Yes, and Tamikia said, gold builders should be getting three ways to. Absolutely. You know, that's how you're going to learn. Get, get your leader on the phone. Now, after a certain point, if you feel like you got it and, and you've answered the questions and you know this business like the back of your hands, then fine. Then if, you, if your person, let me say this, if your prospect says they're ready to get started, there's no need in getting them on a the calendar for a three-way call. 
sign them up. I'm gonna repeat that. If your prospect is ready to get started, do not do the three-way call, sign them up, and in place of the three-way call, once they're signed up, schedule the welcome call. So they're still getting that third-party validation, but if they're ready to go, then, then sign them up, right? Don't hesitate. Anything could happen. So you definitely wanna get them ready. I've had a couple of people, you know, they call me and they're like, okay, I got my prospect on the line and she's a 10. And I'm like, well, what are you getting me on the phone for? Sign her up, <laughs> right? You could be doing the welcome call with me. So, you know, use, use business, business intelligence. If they're ready to go, sign them up. Um, but definitely, you know, gold builders continue to use your upline to do your three-way calls so that you can sharpen your skills. That, that's how you get good, right? By the time you hit director, you'll find there's some people that you still do a three-way call. Every now and then I get somebody that I, I definitely want Mr. Scott to speak to, to do the three-way calls. Um, but now I've gotten to the point where, you know, I know this business inside and out and because of my documentation, I can close them, right? When you're still growing in the business and you haven't made a lot of money, you haven't been able to leave your job, that documentation isn't there. So you, you need to do the three-way call. You've got to get them on the phone with someone who is documented, not just a gold builder, but someone who's made, you know, a significant amount of money residually because your, your prospect needs that. They need to see that this business does work, right? So by the time you hit director, you good, right? You can say, yeah, I built a team of 100 people. You're documented, all right? Anything else, Tamikia? I don't wanna miss anything. No, I think that is, I think that's it. And this was tremendous, by the way, of course, well needed. Um, I really think that that was it, believe it or not. I think that was it. <laughs> okay. And Jessica just asked a very good question. She said, I know we want to have a welcome call done ASAP, but what if your director's calendar is full? Can we use any director or DIT? Absolutely. Just introduce them to someone other than yourself so that they can see that we have layers of leadership. But at some point, definitely you know, even if it's a week later, um, Jessica, definitely introduce them to your immediate director because that's going to be, you know, their go-to person. That's going to be the person that, you know, they're on their team calls and things. So you still want them to know who that person is, but for the sake of the welcome call, sure. You know, my calendar, you know, KMET's calendar, a DIT, absolutely. Just, you know, introduce them to someone. Good question. T, I do have uh, something before we go. Um, yeah. It was on the top of my tongue. And I, I talk about this all the time inside of the um, trainings that I do. And I just want to say that tonight. One of the things that I definitely want to encourage or continue to encourage is that you guys show up to your events, your meetings, your big events, your corporate events, because what is going to happen there, of course, we're in network marketing our profession is networking. So you're gonna be able to network with other goal builders, other directors and trainers, other one star, all the way to five star, right? So now, based on you making and building different relationships with people of different occup uh, occupations, that is what's going to help you determine who can actually help you with the three-way call. So some of you guys already know that Mr. Scott is an associate pastor, right? So I, if I have a pastor, I'm going to try to get on Mr. Scott calendar right. you know if you have someone in taxes they're gonna get on my calendar you talk about a single mom and they get on Cynthia's calendar and so forth you know car salesmen um that is one of the ways that i have actually within 20 months been able have been able to excel very fast in this business because i have been out attending meetings traveling the world attending meetings and building those relationships for other people to do those three-way calls so that is something that i'm actually going to encourage because jessica just said it well hey what happens when calendars are full over this way it happens um so you know now we have something else that we can piggyback on but i love the fact of having people um with different backgrounds that can help me with those three well i know that will help you guys as well absolutely absolutely and we have so many gold builders with so many different backgrounds we could keep it all within our organization but you guys got to get your skills sharp so that the rest of the team feels confident using you for the three-way call. 
And Tanisha, speaking of which, speaking of which, um, you're pretty good at this. A lot of the gold builders that need to be on the call tonight is not. I know this is being recorded, so I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. What is also happening is we have a long list of people that can do the three-way calls, but they are not taking the three-way calls. People are reaching out. They are asking, can those three-way calls be done? They are texting, hey, this is, you know, blah, blah, blah. These people are not even responding back. So for the past, oh my gosh, six to eight months, I have even been wondering why are they on the three-way call list? Because they will not do three-way calls. And I have talked to Mr. Scott about this as well. And, you know, he kind of shared with me, realistically, nothing we can do, but we have to just continue to develop more leaders. And so, therefore, I just left it like that. But I just want you to know that we do not have a long list like we think we do. That's mm -hmm. why I use that, you know, that is why I use that example. You may want to start networking and finding other people mm -hmm. because we got to do a better job within our organization because these individuals are not responding back. And I know it for a fact, not based on what anyone has just told me, which they have, but mm -hmm. I too have done it way even before director and still do it now because I still like that third party validation, you know, especially right. because I, I'm a person of influence. So if I'm talking to my family member or my friend, I definitely, even as a two star, do not want to talk to me, but they are not responding at all. Right. Right. And thank you for that feedback. And honestly, I'm going to take some responsibility for that because I know I need to work with the gold builders one-on-one -on -one more. Um, but even with me doing that, just like Mr. Scott said, you know, there's some people who, you know, they're not going to rise to, to the occasion to serve, but all we can do as leaders is be the example and not everybody's going to follow our leadership. So we just need to continue to be the example. And if there is someone that you identify who does not step up when when they're called upon then guess what when they call upon you for something don't help them and i'm telling you that don't be in an abusive relationship you can't come to me if when i come to you you're not available for me so when people show you who you who they are believe them and you know just keep it moving and like tamika said develop relationships with your cross line business partners um, because you're not limited to just people here. Now, does that mean that you identify, you connect with Michael Bronner Jr. at the meeting and now you're blowing his phone up for all your three-way calls? Absolutely not. Because the people in the other organizations, they're building their own teams. They're doing three-way calls for their own teams. But if you have a special circumstance, like Tamika said, you know, you have someone in law enforcement and you, you know, connected with, Director Daryl Drew, reach out to him. Listen, I have someone who's in law enforcement, um, would love for you to, you know, do my three-way call for that person. But that does not mean that you blow up Director Drew's phone to do all your three-way calls. That's not what we're saying, okay? But again, learn your business. Learn your business where you can get to the point where there is no question that you feel you can't answer. Because every now and then, you may get on your leader's calendar for a three-way call, you call them, and they're hung up on another three-way call, and they can't do your call. Well, as a gold builder, I'm expecting you to handle that call yourself. Plain and simple. I had to do it numerous times. There was many times I had Mr. Scott booked for a three-way call, and he was unavailable at the time, and I had to handle my call. And that's exactly what I did. Okay. Yes, Debbie. My question is, if your business partner signs up an ITA only, are we still responsible to do the game plan interview? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that person may have come into the business not understanding what they left on the table. And so you as the goal builder want to make sure that they have a full understanding of the business. And if they still just want to be an ITA, then that's fine. You want to onboard them. Um, for the ITA side with their sponsor on the line. Absolutely. And do the welcome call. Thank you. You're welcome. Great question. Great question. Quick question. My yeah. question is, when you have business partners that get on board, and then, on board and then all of a sudden say they don't want to um, um, plug in to the system and stuff like that. I'm telling you to tell me in a nicely way how to 
worthy. <laughs> if you so, get what I'm saying. You're saying that you have a new business partner. Not new, you know, just down in my downline period. Uh -huh. You know, when you get them on board, you know, and stuff like that. At first they was eager, oh, I'm gonna be your go-to. And then all of a sudden they're, you know, I don't wanna be a I don't wanna plug in. I just came in for travel. Then you leave them alone and let them travel. Right. And you keep recruiting. 80% of your time should be finding new people. Gotcha. And especially just, if that's all they want to do and they're paying that $39.95 a month, leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Let them do their thing. And, and just leave so, the door open and say, hey, if you have any questions, you need some assistance, let me know. And I'm going to let you do your thing. I'm actually, this is Kevin Eke again. Uh, great question, by the way. I am uh, experiencing the same thing. Um, my people, three ladies in my organization were extremely eager. All of them are 10 and no contemplation whatsoever about joining uh, both sides, uh, the rep side and the travel agent side. And month two was okay. Month one, two, and three, okay. But it's like the third, the end of the third month, going into their fourth month, the fire is gone. And I know I'm still extremely young in the business for me to say it is extremely exhausting when I have my own job and everything else going on. But sometimes it can get exhausting trying to push and motivate people and get them to see what they saw when they first signed up for this business especially when they're not plugging in. I get, you know, you can't do it every week, but you also said that you could commit to so many hours a week. So I'm reminding them of those different things. Other than what I'm doing, is there anything else that you can give me as far as feedback? Yeah, stop trying to convince, tr stop trying to motivate them. You can't motivate so, them as an adult. Okay, so two things. I get what you're saying. And the other thing is, what what you also said a couple of minutes ago we gotta keep people off a of credit hole or stuff like that i don't want to get that far into it where i'm having to oh my god let me help you this month i don't want to get that far i just want to keep them get them motivated more motivated you can't get somebody motivated that's what i'm trying to tell you if they don't want it they don't want it Plain and simple. You, you can inspire people, but if their bank account is not motivating them, there's nothing that you can do or say. You know, if we do a better job of, again, it starts with the three-way call. If we do a better job at painting the picture, and or, or let me say this, if we do a better job on a three-way call of finding out what people want, what their dream is, and then showing them how they can accomplish that with this business and what it's going to look like via the income disclosure statement. If we do those things and then on the onboarding process, get them started with the just ask peak interest script, showing them the IntelliTravel, you know, um, agent training manual and the online academy. If we do our job with that, and two, three months down the line, they fall off, then they just fall off. There's nothing you can do. It's not about you, it's them. But where we're falling short, and, and what Tamika and I are saying is, there's a lot of stuff that we're not doing in the beginning that's causing them to fall off. So that's why we're doing this training, to make sure that you guys are nailing the three-way call from the beginning so that you don't have those issues down the line. They'll still may fall off but it won't be because you didn't do something hold on that's Scott called me and we got to jump on the call so i'm gonna end this training now but we'll probably do this again next sunday okay everyone my uh my sponsor and my director and i just don't know if i lost it um, that, you know, just being out of the loop for a little while because of the death in my family, I just don't know if I lost it. I don't, I'm not blaming myself. I'm just trying to, it basically in the future, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm doing everything I can do. Like, like you said, do what you can't, not do what you can't do. Do your due diligence and make sure you're doing everything that you're trained on. And then if they can't do it or they won't do it, then you kind of got to let them go. Right. So, get on your, your, lead, your director's calendar.
I don't want us to um, be late for Mr. Scott's call and who's calling me, but um, Kevin Ikea, get on your director's calendar and just go over to onboarding. And just so you know, I do have an upcoming training that I'm working on, again, for onboarding. And there's already a video out there that I did for onboarding. So go ahead, go back and watch that video. There's two, it's a part one and part two for that, okay? Okay, I will. All right, I gotta go and I'll see you guys on the legacy call. This webinar is officially over.